another GBOH for us, uh, the Grenicus. This is <sighs> Alexander, tired of being in Europe, crosses over to Asia Minor, never comes back, and faces the Persians for the first major battle. A bunch of local Persians get together, they decide the better part of valor doesn't apply, and there's a fight. This is heavily weighted in favor of the Macedonian army. Uh, among other things, not only the forces, a lot of like Cav, it just doesn't have a lot of staying power and a lot of strength to it. And then uh, back here we have a hoplite line to stiffen that up with some peltists. Um, you'll notice the odds set up with the light cav stretching across the river. Uh, you have four different configurations you can fight this battle. This is the one the designer most favors as likely. This is such an important battle even though it's a blowout. They took the effort on this. Um, most of them are fairly minor variations. So um, it's based on the ancient but non-contemporary historians <laughs> reports of what happened. So they're pretty suspect as with most battles uh, from this era. But on the other hand, we don't usually get this many variations. Uh, the one he favors is the defense along the river line secondary option is to pull the cav back, give it room to charge, but as we've seen this kind of cav charging doesn't have a lot of effect. Really all that it does is gives it a possible chance, and with a light cav that's not very impressive, of getting the shock superiority, um, which is to say if it matches up and has superiority it'll get it on the attack. Since we're defending we're probably just as well uh, sitting on the river. The other two options, this one is, hey, uh, the Macedonians managed to cross the river and it was not fought over the river. It's fought uh, essentially on, I think, the Gagamela map, the clear plain. And then they're actually gave five. Um, another one here might be interesting. It might have different victory conditions. It trickles the forces in on both sides. It's considering it as a meeting engagement. Uh, not a lot of support for that. It's just something they're throwing out to allow you a chance to uh, treat, a, treat a battle as a meeting engagement, which seldom happens in the series. And it should give a little bit of balance in favor of the Persians. Not enough to make it even. but And then there's the argument as to whether or not the battle actually happened on the evening that the forces arrived there or if it happened the next morning. And that gives additional Macedonian troops is really the only effect. I don't think there are any special rules. Yeah, there are. The Granicus itself, the east bank, is a steep bank feature. Uh, retreat edges, east and west, as seems obvious. Persians have line commands. Now, they have a basically by nationality. This is really a polyglot force where none of the commanders could agree with each other. And to make things worse, we're going to play with the optional rule that says only the correct commander can give a line command to the unit. And that seems fair, and honestly, you probably don't need line commands for most maneuvers you're going to be able to do, because this is perhaps the only time when they're going to be formed up in a, well, you'll have units scattering due to route. This thing, though, can be launched as a line. Can it all be launched as a single line? Ah, oh, it doesn't look like it. It looks like we got this poor butt head back here with no line command capability. Now, there's no overall commander, which means anytime you want to do a line command, you got to make a roll to do it. 
Ah, uh, anything else here? Persian withdrawal is 90 route points. The uh, Macedonians are 100 in all the scenarios except for the one where they have some extra troops. Right, we'll give the, per the Persians a chance to uh, screw themselves over. We use the elite initiative to move a small force forward. Basically, this is, you know, not a situation I really want to face. I hate the idea of crossing a river. It seems so non, I don't know. terrain chart see what we're looking at here it's a steep banked stream I think I can't remember the east bank is a steep banked stream hexide feature so we've got a steep banked stream when we're crossing that and that causes multiple cohesion hits to cross. You know, here's the thing. It's not being able to charge forward, which helps. It's that the way terrain effects are handled in this system, being a hex back means that the enemy takes their cohesion hits coming to you, as opposed to after they've already defeated you. And that's why you want to be one hex back. It's got nothing to do with reality. Um, and then we have a normal stream on the other side, I guess. So we enter, I, I really don't know what they mean by it's a steep bank stream on one side. Um, that doesn't even make sense. Because what is it harder for because the Macedonians are going to pay for the stream when they walk into it I guess I guess <laughs> and I don't know about this uh, if the Persians go in they get a steep bank stream penalty instead and if you cross that I don't know what you get maybe just the steep bank Times when GBOH really infuriates me. Uh, here. Because, so this is a period where, at least for the Macedonians and especially Alexander, the leaders fought with their troops. They led from the very front and they gave an example of what kind of bravery and heroism the troops should be performing. However, because of the GBOH-based system rules and the risks and advantages to not being engaged, you never do that. You always kind of, maybe on a third activation or something, you'll throw someone in. But you want those activations, and if you throw yourself into combat, your troops don't do as much. They become less motivated, not more, which is just bullshit, right? <laughs> you know? Um... Uh, and obviously, I could try to fudge around and change rules, you know, say, hey, you can command when you're in your zone in certain ways, like rally troops and push them forward and everything. Um, but, you know, the scenario, even the Persians, they had them set up right with their troops. But no, you don't want them there. So pretty much most of the Persian leaders just jumped off their troop forces. We have this guy here. He's dispatching a couple of... Uh, there's javelin ears out there because, hey, there's a gap here. And, you know, it's pretty obvious that's what's going to be taken advantage of because who the hell wants to attack something like this? I've advanced on the flanks, not, not intentionally. Alexander got a die roll of doom and didn't go forward. And, you know, this guy didn't get a momentum and whatever. So, uh, yeah, and that's what passes for strategy on, on the field here. A frontal assault all across the river line just isn't my way of doing things, I'm afraid. But I'm having a hard time. Uh, I'm trying to use missile fire to weaken things here so that the cav charge can maybe do something. Likewise over here I'm sending peltists to try to... well, are they peltists even? No, those are cav. Uh, I've got the peltists up here uh, with the hope of doing the uh, harassment fire. Unfortunately, 
that's not going to do much because I'm facing units that largely are missile armed as well. Uh, if I can get my cav across and in reasonable shape, I can roll up that line and start creating enough disorder that bringing the phalanx forward. Now it's it's been moving, but uh, should crack uh, the enemy. But man, it just does not look good to me to go charging into the river. I, I don't care. I look at the numbers, and yeah, the phalanxes are magical, right? But uh, these are not that terrible in terms of the units themselves. They've got a terrain advantage. Yeah, their leadership sucks. I'm going to have a hard time reacting to the attack. But it's very, very difficult for me to just pull the trigger on. Yeah, let's just go across. Well, uh, I'm... Uh I've been ill for a couple of days and unable to play, which is why it's taking so long for this to get up. The, um, I'm fine now, or mostly. Uh, I decided to launch an attack here. I softened up one of the units with missile fire, only one. Pulled my skirmishers out of the way and launched using the elite initiative I get a bunch of one-on-one -on -one attacks. These are heavy cav charging, light cav. I believe that's uh, <laughs> that better be attack superior because I'm charging yeah, for a reason, right? Uh, yes, it is. And it's going to be on a pretty good chart too, I assume. But I've got two column shifts against me because of going up that steep bank from the stream, which sucks. And it's gonna be a painful attack. Um, but I gotta, I gotta break through at some point. You know? And I took, uh, I took significant hits just walking into the stream in charge formation that was double cohesion, so that's two points, plus whatever I took from the missiles there. Quality of companion cab, though, makes it so we make it across entirely. Couple of, one die roll that had to be lucky that was, was uh, the final one here with the nine point command. I had to get an, mm, had to get at least a seven. I got a nine. These guys have some big hits on them though. Because they had to go up uh, this terrain. That wouldn't have broken them, but they had to make it up. A good job the companions did after I shifted some forces to get across the river here. I decided to slam in with my cab, and you can see mixed results, not too bad really. Um, I routed one unit, and well, it's hard to tell with the numbers because I've got them underneath, so some of these aren't in terrible shape. The thing is, this guy attacked two. I threw the leader right in, so he's actually truly finished at this point. I can't command him. To do something else. Not that I'm going to get another chance because I didn't make my second momentum. I got the phalanx moving up. Yeah, they'll go in, but you know, just because that's what the scenario pretty much demands. All right, phalanx against light cav though isn't any kind of real bonus. There's all kind of bonuses to just being a phalanx, so I think that'll probably be able to crack the line too. But uh, for the most part, I'm going to count on the companions to strip that side. And then the flanking over here. I moved a bunch of pieces. I kind of cheated, but it didn't have any effect. I did this guy next. <laughs> and he really shouldn't have gone until in between the two five-point uh, Macedonian leaders. But it, it didn't make a difference. Nothing was happening over there. And that means I think we're done with everyone except Alexander himself, who gets his non-elite initiative moves. Another little error back here. I forgot to apply, I think, uh, the doubled points for charging units entering the stream. These guys did single and it got me confused. I forgot about it here. And that resulted in one of these guys routing simply because uh, oh, he was... Um, Post-combat check, basically. He came within one of his morale. Uh, most of them did come within one of their morale. He was the only one that routed. We also then had follow-up attacks here, and uh, we had a route here. Now, Alexander hasn't decided what he's doing entirely. He's got, you know, seven commands. 
He could try to smash into these formally routed units, form up into charge formation or whatever. But man, my units are pretty tired, and I think I'm better off just uh, just doing some recovery action. Kinder opens things up with some more recovery and a little bit of attack over here, and then uh, some of the light infantry javelin throwers come in. I actually drive away one of the... Oh, that's a companion. Nah, that's the Lancer. He was involved in some of those attacks. On this guy who tried to rally and fell back further. We got parts of the hoplites moving in both directions. Just trying to shore up the flanks with the uh, central reserve. Now, I don't know if they can even do a line command. I don't think they can. This is all Marys. They could not. So it's not really a big deal. And basically dispatching those central units uh, to be used where they might, you know, to try to cover where the breakthroughs are happening. Over here, I screwed up with the uh, uh, with the Persians. These are. Cataphracted units, they say cat on them. And they have certain bonuses, but because of the scenario, because of the optional rule I'm playing with, they only have them when they're in charge formation. So I'm um, creating wedges. They've got bonuses on both attack and defense when they're in it, basically. Uh, which I had forgotten about completely. They probably would have been set up better. Uh, they have a lot of bonuses, actually, not just there. They have bonuses against missile fire and all kinds of cool stuff. So I'll try to keep those in mind. Um, but now we're at kind of the five point swing, which means this leader, but first one of the two Macedonian five point leaders has to go. Interesting action happened over here. He actually got a full three activations. The first one involved some attacks and you can see he didn't really break through here he actually got knocked back uh, with a rally taking place there chase down this is where quality just matters being able to cross the stream and knock you know what are really equivalent class units light infantry versus light infantry yeah these are peltists they're a little better against Cav. They have longer spears to defend with or training or whatever. Um, but one of the biggest things is some of the rallying attempts were failures. So I had things mixed up here, but we got the Macedonians on the board now, 14 points. However, this looked important enough that there was a Trump attempt after the first momentum roll succeeded and that failed and that's going to kind of doom this flank it's really the problem that you have to make with the trumping is hey you know i got a 60 percent chance here and bad things could happen here now it turned out really bad things didn't happen because uh, whoever our fearless leader is here Armenian. Yeah, okay. That's a familiar sounding name. <laughs> Ended up um, spending most of his time uh, refreshing his units. But still, when this cab comes swinging around, there's going to be big problems. And it's highly unlikely that we're going to get hoplites in the way to kind of deflect that. And now, over here, Alexander's wing with the companions has pretty much free reign to just brush these aside. I'm not sure how much they could have done, but they could have smacked this guy and they could have maybe pulled more, pulled the light infantry up for a better defensive position. I don't know. And here we are after Alexander pushed further. Again, doing some recovery, etc. Taking things cautiously. Taking things cautiously here as well. I didn't get the momentum moves that I needed. I think I got one. I think generally I did some auxiliary work back here as well as moving my last unit forward. One, two, three, four, five. The 
problem is I can't move the entire phalanx line at once, which kind of makes it hard to make the decision to attack. But anyway, um, we have the heavy cav across. It's driven the lights back. We got more lights destroyed here, so now uh, Persians are at 23 on their on their bad list. And about it. He, Alexander got his uh, momentums or momentum. The nice thing about the elite initiative, you don't have to roll for your first momentum. So, <laughs> because you get a turn before anybody else goes. Now, you don't have to take it yourself, but then you also get, if you do so, you then get a free move with your, your leader and, and then uh, the, the chance of the momentum. And it seems like that's where the most success is going over here. Yeah, we're across the river, but in terms of the actual fighting, it hasn't been uh, it hasn't been going that strongly in our favor. In fact, you know, if it weren't for the the right flank over there, uh, this would look iffy. Mm. You know, there's there's a fair force still here. Alexander again charges with the heavy cav, and these companions are high enough quality that it's very unlikely they will pursue. So I haven't had to worry too much about that. Well, I've rolled, but I haven't worried about it. Over here we see he's launching the infantry. Again, I didn't really want to do the frontal assault this way, but honestly, if I don't bring them to bear, I'm not sure what's going to happen. It's going to take forever to roll up this line, and I feel like I've got some cover with the uh, flanks beginning to hit. And we got Persians crossing the river in route and everything. So it, it should be uh, it should be something that we can operate within. Although actually that's probably a better location for them to route to down the river. Um, and now it's time for all the Persian leaders to go. And they're so crappy, they're not going to be able to rally this crap. And it's just going to... It's not all crap. It's decent units, actually. Just lousy leadership. And it, it's going to make it off the board and just slowly raise the, uh, raise the point values. Center here, other than right here, is where the weakest of the Persian generals are. So they had to go next. We did have a launch here, which drove... One of the companions back across the river. Uh, here, basically, just a pass. I'm not in range to even move these things. Uh, and over here, a little bit of recovery work, and that's it. And now the phalanx center moves into play. And this wasn't all in one big sweep. You could only get five of the phalanx units in the first hit. The other one came in and brought these heavy infantry and then there were like two rounds of combat up here and you can see we kind of shattered part of the line there. The phalanxes themselves, they're stuck in the river, they've got horrible problems. A number of them along this line had several chances to rout, but they have their saving throws and you know they can just keep pushing into the water <laughs> and shoving the men in front of them forward etc I guess. Um, Anyway, whatever that press is, it didn't fall apart. Instead, it held up to those ch checks and yeah, did a pretty good chance. Basically, every one of these units had a shot at routing, and I think one of them had two shots at routing. Um, but I'm not sure. And over here, we broke through. And one of the heavies failed, though. And as the turn comes to an end, we can see both of the Persian flanks have pretty much collapsed, although there's a fair sort of force kind of conglomerating over here. But it's not enough to stand up to the, uh, the companion's calf. And over here, there's just nothing really. <laughs> there's these routing units. I mean, I got two hoplite units, but it's hard to get them into position to defend the line. One of them probably can stand here. The other one can maybe swing and move forward and try to link up and refuse a flank here. If I could get some of these light infantry in the hill, that, that would be strong, but otherwise, or stronger. Otherwise, though, you know, 
anything can be skirted and flanked and uh, you know you take some hits for going up a hill but nah, nothing there. For Alexander himself he spent most of the time reforming his units. They were not in the best shape and also forming them up. Oh, they also were not in the best position. They're still not really but it looks a lot more solid at this point. Whenever you fight and this is not at all unreasonable uh, the units end up in a disorganized mess and you want to dress that line and get it back together uh, because this is uh, in an ancients type uh, situation that's especially important it's not like you know the civil war battles where oh yeah it's okay that unit being flipped uh, you know put out over there he's got some range of fire he can defend himself a little bit pieces just have to be kind of near each other they can spread out now you kind of need a solid line here wherever you can get one things are kind of in chaos here these heavy infantry could well get thrown back depending on what happens but any attempt to do so means weakening the force that's facing the companion cab uh, speaking of Alexander He's, of course, hanging back, watching the battle from behind. Completely ahistorical. It's just one of the flaws of the system, as far as I'm concerned, that you... So, one of the few ways I could lose this at this point as the Macedonians is if I threw Alexander into a fight and he maybe got killed because he's worth... I think it's 35 points. It may be more than that. And that's a good way towards their route number. Hey, you know... There'd still have to be a lot of other luck going on. But the biggest thing is, his troops just can't operate properly if he get, engages himself. So, you know, whatever little advantage you get, unless he's going to go on one-on-one -on -one combat with someone, and he's awesome at that, it gives a minus four or a plus four to the die roll. Well, that's pretty damn good, but it's not good enough to justify either risking him or more importantly not having his command ability you know not getting his momentums and such not and i always dislike when a, a system tries to drive you to play in an ahistorical fashion but i've lost too many games of great battles of history uh hoplite i know i lost one game where you know i was in this good a position as good a position as the macedonians are right now and then lost a couple of leaders because I threw them into battles just to try to hurry the game along, basically. And boom, you know, and I was just like, what the hell? Besides forming up Alexander's uh, in elite initiative, I did a little work with these hoplites, or these uh, uh, hypaptists here. But... He made a couple of attacks as well as kind of forming up a stronger line. One of the attacks was these lancers who hit the flank of these peltists. The peltists took the chance, and it's not a very good one. They only had a 40% chance of surviving it, of turning because they were being hit in the flank and uh, presenting the front. And that's a big deal because they're defender superior, so they pretty much romped all over the Lancers because they did succeed. Over here, a couple more cav... Uh, do, 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 do. Where, where, where? One here routed this unit of Light Cav. I thought this was another Light Cav. It was under Memnon, who's in charge of the Light Cav. It turned out it was some infantry that I charged, and uh, they routed before I reached them, so we didn't have to deal with them. And that'll put us over to the little guys here. Daniel Hall here, uh, RSMAs, uh, used, he rallied one of his cav, recovered it. But he used one of his cav to strike some of the heavy infantry, and he's in a position to hit another one. There's a lot of exposed flanks over here. He got a momentum. A couple more actions by him would be painful. So this is one of those times when a trump was, you know, I mean, it's often valuable, but here it's one of those times where there was no pain in trying to trump. This guy here doesn't have much he has to do. 
Now, sometimes you want a Trump to get the initiative to do something over on a flank. I don't feel like that's necessary there. I just need to turn. I can give him time to deploy if he wants. But over here, there's no real requirement. I'm not all that gung-ho about making those attacks, but I will to collapse the line more quickly. So I trumped in, it was successful, and now we've got all these no momentum markers on, uh, on the lower, well, on all but one of the Persian leaders. Remember, all those phalanxes were near the breaking point. There's a reason I was a little hesitant about doing this, but I ended up routing two of the, and destroying one of of those two, of the uh, Persians there and gaining more ground here. And it's beginning to look like, you know, the flank over here is, might get cut off. That would be terrible. Um, but I'm not quite sure what to do about it. I don't have additional troops. I could try to pull back, and, but it's very hard to disengage in these games. So, yeah, the, reversing direction and such not is not not the easiest thing. You, it's easier in this than it is, and I find that disturbing, than it is in the Viva Lemper Napoleonic stuff that I was doing. But, uh, and maybe this is way too lenient, but it feels like you can kind of inch back a little bit. In that series, you really can't disengage. It may be almost impossible here as well, though. Um, but one of the big phalanx units broke. And, you know, that's that's a hefty cost. That's 14 more points on the Macedonian side when it comes around. i got to add these suckers, though. Okay, so uh, that Trump putting the limiters on these lesser commanders is really kind of painful. Some of them may have been able to do some interesting things in terms of rallying attempts or whatever. We have units ready to march off the board and it was too important to try to s patch the holes with a lucky momentum chance. Maybe I would have gotten some rallies as well. Here we pushed back with the phalanx, uh, the hoplites phalanx. And then we did the same here and here and these were successful. We've got routing, uh, a routing phalanx unit actually. From this one and I failed to push forward but that's okay I routed on the post combat check so that's right uh, so you know the defense is throwing up some kind of so showing some kind of spine at this point finally over here it's really tough I use the leader for something else because I'm locking these phalanx units down as long as they're not attacking me because my numbers are greater it's hard for me to attack them because I still have to cross that uh, steep stream bank and as far as I can tell, that's a penalty to the attacker or the defender. So we're both just kind of sitting there pushing at each other and stuff, but not really pushing the uh, combat forward. Nobody's been declaring attacks there. I could have activated and just started throwing missiles at them. That doesn't do a hell of a lot with phalanxes. I mean, eventually, maybe I'd wear them down or I'd run out of missiles. Those, those are kind of the two choices. And it just didn't seem like a good use of my couple commands that I had in that sector. In fact, rallying isn't a good use. I'm going to lose hordes of troops this turn, maybe too many, but I feel like I have to throw units into the fray or else the flanks just were completely exposed. Look this up to make sure I was correct, but remember these double uh, hoplite units, they have some of the same advantages of the phalanx, at least the saving throw aspect, which... I, I wanted to make sure that wasn't just a tyrant special rule, but that's part of Alexander. So even if they're heavily pressed, they they have some greater stamina than most units would. These big hoplite units are just as resilient to, you know, what seem like cool attacks coming from the flanks and everything as they are to any other kind of damage they take. If they take too much of it, well, they get their saving throw. Uh, this one actually had a fair chance of routing, but did not. Both of them had to make a roll. And I mean, you know, at the very least, they have a fair chance. This one had a, a very good chance of routing, I'd say, I think 70% or something. Okay. Uh, 
after playing Mage Knight most of last night, or, yeah, and then waking up kind of early, but not getting right to this. And, yeah, waking up stupidly early. I'm a little stunned, but anyway. Over here, our good uh, Memnon or whatever, had the tough choice of the rally units or try to throw them in the line. Now, my force was so beaten up that really the only thing I could do is try to do offensive actions, maybe with, a, you know, some of this crap here. That's not going to do. So I did uh, five rally attempts, got a momentum check. Hey, I'm going to go do more, you know, get, get more of my force into play. Okay. Well, trumped in by Alexander. We don't want any more of that silliness. So, oops. Jesus, I think I forgot to activate two of these leaders. Son of a bitch. I see these no momentums. They cover up. It makes it not look like a leader. It just looks like a mess of stuff. Well, all right. I'll go back and activate them because they shouldn't completely lose their turn. And I think that's fairer than anything else. It might have been some reactive capabilities that they're getting that they shouldn't. But well, what happened over here was uh, Alexander kind of did a mixture of forming up his lines, but he also attacked the hoplites, and he sent those damn agrarians, or whatever they are, agrians, into, uh, into attack this light infantry. Uh, they're skirmisher pluses, so they can do this. I thought, well, I'm hitting from the flank. I had two units of them, so it wasn't that huge a... Uh, and outnumbering. It's like one one fa uh, size point each. I might win just on the, you know, the um, the morale check or whatever. Well, they're pretty questionable to throw into combat that way. They both got shot by the archers as they came in, but you know, it would have been really helpful to uh, collapse that unit just because. Uh, this is kind of forming a little bit of strength here. <clears throat> and then on momentum, I got a die roll of doom result, handed off another activation to the guy that I trumped in on because I really didn't want to let him have one. Well, he went back and rallied and scared a few of his troops. But anyway, we'll get back to these suckers, damn it. This didn't turn out that bad. Uh, this guy managed... To help a couple of his units recover, both guys did really. He's the second guy on here, I forgot about that. Okay. And... <coughs> the guy with a little bit of range over here threw these hoplites onto the line over here. Hey, help out a little bit. I, it looks like a failing cause there, but whatever. I actually have cleared a nice hole here. And, you know, what I've got here probably will prevent those hoplites from moving forward. These guys have been unwilling to continue engaging. So they haven't been moving forward. But it's the flanks. I'm pinned here in the center. I can't just let the Macedonians cross. Or, in some cases, I'm engaged in combat. So... There just ain't a lot left for me to grab. And I may well, I mean, 35 points sends me over. I may have that running off the map right now. We'll see. I thought those Persians had a 100 route factor. They only have a 90. And we actually broke the 100. So I forgot about it. This guy made it not really much of a question there. The only thing is there were a couple of crap infantry, but that's it. It's over. Wow, um, you know, it felt like more of a battle in some ways than it really was. I think that Alexander can pretty much do whatever the hell he likes in this battle. I mean, I kind of cracked my way across on the flanks and everything and tried to be all careful and everything. But honestly, yeah, you could just charge across and, uh, and smack the enemy everywhere. It doesn't seem to be... 
you know, after I hit with these, I realized, wow, I didn't suffer much of a penalty for doing so. I mean, yes, they're in the river, they're not happy, but the only, the only difficulty of doing that is they have to run just as far as everybody else, and everybody else is kind of fast, so <laughs> unless you want to make checks to see if they can move their speed five. Huh, an interesting battle. Not uh, not one that looks particularly balanced or, or anything, but uh, I had some fun fighting it out. All right, let's send this up. 